All right, so tonight we have a little repair job on a 2008 Chevy Equinox. Uh, it's a common problem to have the transmission lines leaking. Uh, my nephew called me and he said he had an oil leak, so I <laughs> poked my head out of there and it's just the transmission line. So I'm going to show you how to quickly and cheaply patch them. Um, you could go to the dealer and buy the lines, that would work too. Uh, it may be not that expensive, but uh, for about maybe 20 bucks, we're going to show you how to repair these. Okay? Alright, let's show you where I'm talking about. Uh, I have, have a light here. Let's see, way down there, I don't know if you can see it, there's a clamp right where I got that light. Uh, you can see that right there. That piece right there, right in there. Uh, it collects friggin' salt and everything else and it's not very designed very good so let's uh, go in here what we're gonna do is and I'll get you guys upside down we're gonna cut this line over here somewhere where it's good now we could pick it out of there with a pick but um, these clamp thingy deals here spring clamps if you open them up with a friggin pick and then pull that line out and some don't come out um, if you don't squash the clip back down, the line will pop out when you're driving down the road. Probably at the most inconvenient time and could burn your transmission out. So I'm going to take a pipe cutter and I'm going to cut it down here somewhere. Both of these and I'm going to make lines out of steel. Um, you could use copper, copper flexes. Uh, I know some people don't like to use copper on transmission lines because down over here, if you can see down where my flashlight is, trying to get the right angle, uh, where they go across right here on the transmission they flex the tranny flexes all the time so what I'm gonna do is make steel lines to fit in here um, I'm gonna have to put the car up on the ramps I see and I'm cut those out with side cutters and then we're gonna oh, I'll show you we'll put steel lines in with a little bubble flare on the end and hold everything on now you can see how much it was leaking just uh, putting the car up on the ramps here um, be easier to probably take these things out right here these uh, push clips and give yourself some room that'll have you have to probably take the whole friggin flare off but we're gonna try to do it without that um, the area I'm talking about is up in here uh, the camera up in there you can see the lines coming down it's pretty rotty right there right oh, get the right angle sorry guys right along there and they come down on this side of the cradle we're into the side of the car now and uh, I'm going to cut the hoses off right there. I'm going to run my own steel lines. Then I'm going to tie strap right to those. Then we're going to spray them with crown undercoating spray or something like that. But first things first. We need to put something under here to keep it from dripping on me. And then we're going to come. And that fluid is pretty black. We're going to have to change that too. It's probably never done. We're going to come in here with a pipe cutter. And we're going to cut these two lines off. Uh, it may be a little bit difficult. I might cut that one up higher up there because I see a little bit of rust right there too so uh, I might have to take this spoiler thing off the front to get a better shot at this okay, with a major pain in the ass but I got that piece out of there the air dam um, and you need to remove it to properly get at your lines you can see the salt and shit gets up in here and yeah Canadian winters that's what happens so we're gonna cut this all out of here I'm gonna find a bucket to let this drain into and then proper thing would do is to probably buy them but it's cheaper to fix it this a little bit of time okay, so it is a pain in the ass but if you can get this transmission line off first before you flare it patch it it'll make it much easier that's just a lock plastic lock goes over top of that you gotta kind of pull that with a screwdriver and hold on to that sucker because it'll fly right out. And I'll get back to you when I get it out. Now that you got that line unhooked, uh, now go ahead and spray it with some penetrating oil if you can find some. I can't find it here. Um, I got the clip out. Be very careful not to bend this open. As you bend it open, that transmission line is only held in there by three points, you can see. And uh, if they're not all made contact, it could slip out and it'll blow the transmission line out of there and you'll empty your tranny of transmission fluid. So. That's next step. I might have to cut the line off first, but I'm going to try to pull this out. It doesn't look good. I'm going to have to twist it. I may have to just leave it in here and uh, cut it back right here with the 
pipe cutter because it'll go in there in between. But first thing, I'm going to go down below and cut that lines off there, rubber hose. As you can see, we're on the front of the car here. It's not an easy spot to get at. Um, you can use a knife or side cutters. You need to cut that, cut that off right there, that rubber hose. Um, if you buy new ones, that's the easier way to do it. Well, I'm not saying it's easier way, but um, then they're one piece and you don't have to fool around with hose clamps shit, but it's expensive. Uh, you'd take it out the transmission right there and put new seals in there. But anyway, we're not doing that. So I'm gonna cut those off any way possible and then we're gonna pull that line out of there and we're gonna wiggle it see if we can pull it out if it doesn't come out then we're gonna cut her off there with a pipe cutter and we'll put our union in there and make a new line so i forgot my side cutter is at work so i've opted to right here have my knife out and we're just gonna slice this off i'm gonna have to come cut scene and come back a good sharp knife should kick yeah, these are all rotted anyway so we don't really care what happens to the steel part yeah I'll come back at you when I get it cut off uh, make sure you have a bucket handy right down there you catch any fluid right there because uh, there's gonna be a lot of fluid coming out of this line a little bit of drippage so you don't want to get it in your driveway so I'll come back at you when I get them cut off okay with that done I should be able to pull those lines out and kind of push them out of their brackets and you can see what I'm doing over here I already took them out with the screwdriver, but they get stubborn at times. Sorry about the camera work, guys. I'm working after work here, and it's getting colder out. And I figure, oh, you guys love to see me suffer, so that one's still clicked in there. So I'm going to get a screwdriver in there and then clip them some more. So since my line won't come out of the rad, we're going to use a thumb wheel cutter cutter off. And then we're going to pull this section down on the ground. We're going to make a steel line copy of it, and then we'll put it right back in place. Hang on there. So that transmission line is out and you can see how rotted it was. Sorry guys about the lighting here. It's uh, getting dark out as after work. The only time I got to do this. Um, my back was killing me yesterday, so there you go. All right, we're gonna make a close proximity of this line. Leave it a little longer on this end so we can reattach the rubber to it. And we're gonna put a little bubble flare in the back. So let's get the line out and straighten it out and Go from there. Well, straighten it. I mean, straighten the line out so we can bend her up. It comes coiled, so you have to straighten it first a little bit. It's easier to do it once it's all together than trying to straighten it afterwards. Uh, I mean, straighten it out. I'm just going to straighten it out of the roll until I get it. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here or not. Run it over my knee until I get a length of it. Hopefully, I get enough for both lines here. All right. So. It takes a little skill to use one of these little tubing benders, but um, I found this one here to be the best one. I think you can buy them at, uh, this one comes from Princess Auto, or you can get them at Harbor Freight. We're bending 3 8 steel, but without it, try to use your thumb to bend that. You can forget it on the end for sure, but if you can get it into close proximity, um, you can see I start it, we'll do that next. Uh, it'll be It'll fit better in the vehicle and it won't rub on anything. So. All right, I'll get back to you when I'm done bending and we're gonna do a flare on the end. Okay, so we got a makeshift workbench. Um, there's my line, one line is bent. Uh, I put a little bubble flare on the end. We start out like that, don't crush it all the way. Crush it all the way, it's gonna make the end of the line sharper and you'll never get it over in the hose over top of it. Now we're putting this on there to keep the line from vibrating or whatever you wanna call it. It'll actually work its way off there. Um, and then we're going to double hose clamp it so it cannot come off All right, so there's my little flare that little bubble on the end will keep your line from Sliding off in case your hose clamps come loose. Um, sometimes they seem to come loose, but we're running out of battery here. So hang on It's another night and we're going to reinstall these clips here right here. Oops um, Yeah, you don't want to open these suckers up you want to them to stay together bent in I'll show you when I reinstall it you need to pick to do this oh, let's get down in there and do go at it okay I might not be able to do this one hand what you want to do is put the one corner in that little slot and then roll it around you don't want to friggin don't want to open it up too much you don't want to open it up at all you want these 
this thing to stay in shape and then I kind of got it messed up already don't want that going underneath either kind of like that you drop it if I drop it here I'm gonna be done for I can't see what I'm doing okay I come back at you I gotta check this out make sure now that looks like it's in place I'm having a hard time what you want to look for I'll tell you real quick these three bumps sticking inside the line here should be three of them if you only see two you need to replace that clip or take it back off and bend it so it's in more it's more so we'll go from there I gotta put the bottom one in gotta put the bottom one in and then uh, we'll uh, put this back on there so to put these back in you should put some kind of lubricant on there so they go right in and make sure you put this sorry about the lights guys uh, this lock thingy back over top that keeps that from popping well it's supposed to keep that from spreading out popping out but I don't know if it works or not but anyway so no easy way to do this I have my two lines I'm gonna go at her here and jam them down in there I'm gonna do the bottom one first and then I'll put the top one in after then we'll come back and tie strap it all in I'll show you after I'm done so you can see this is not in place um, lubrication will help and I don't have any I'm gonna try to push it in one hand you could hear it click when they go in just like now you know they're in because I saw those little things move outwards and you can see that they're fully seat it so I'm pulling it on and off. I just stuck it in there I'm pulling it on. it's in place pulling on it pretty good so it's hard to do it one hand sorry guys about the camera angle I need to come back and now and put that cover on it, just like that that's supposed to keep that line from popping out the lock okay so that in place let's put the top one so if you do it right your line should go approximately back in where they used to be. Um, you should go over a crown rust or something like that. So I'm going to spray it so this doesn't happen again. Uh, I like to double hose clamp everything with the bulge on the end of that line, but I've screwed one of my hose clamps up, so I'm going to have to go with this. Yeah, if you get the lines close to where they go, you can, you know, you can take shortcuts and friggin' hack it in there and it'll work. But I don't like it rubbing all over the place and I like to put them back where they belong um, now if you bought the original equipment that would be together and it would go right in place but that's another story so um, to check the transmission fluid there's a little yellow plug right there now you can see it right behind that bracket and you can get it from the top you need a long extension with a 12 mil socket on it um, and it's a bit hard to pull out if you can turn it first wiggle it it'll I'm not going to promise you it's going to come out, but mine came out. That's how I got it. Uh, put a little bit of lubricant on it when you put it back in. And uh, I think you have to check it in gear. So that's the next step. I'm going to throw this skid plate back on it. But that's going to be another video checking that fluid, I think. Um, so I'm going to throw all this undercarriage back on it. Cut these tangs off here on the tie straps. And then uh, we'll put fluid in it. So after you're done, make sure you always double check your work. I don't care how good you think you are, double check. Now, I'm just going to go look for leaks anywhere. I spilled a lot of transmission fluid. I wish I would have the container under it. Uh, everything looks good. Double check. So uh, that's the transmission line fix for under $20 for Chevy Equinox. I'll show you the bill I got for the compression fittings and the hose clamps. It was like $10 or something like that. Anyway, so we're just putting fluid in it. I might make another video of that, and that's where that bugger is way down there. Hey, who? Oh, yeah, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys later. See ya.